Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing new discoveries coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And some of these discoveries are somewhat unexpected. And I guess the main discovery here is in regards to the shape of the Milky Way that we might have once again been a little bit incorrect about. With all of this, as always, coming from the study you can find in the description below, with a title, What Does the Milky Way Look Like? A question that's surprisingly difficult to answer because we are preserving everything from within the Milky Way itself. And if you've been on the channel long enough, you know that there have been quite a few times when the scientists realized that we might have been incorrect about certain assumptions when it comes to the shape of our own galaxy. For example, in this simulation that you see right here, using Space Engine, this is an extremely outdated and even somewhat primitive representation of the galaxy that does not describe Milky Way very well. As a matter of fact, this most likely does not look like the Milky Way at all. With even some of the older videos by the European Southern Observatory that usually produces accurate observations of everything, presenting this as a potential representation of the Milky Way. But this image by Pablo Carlos Budasi, a really brilliant artist, presents the Milky Way shape in a slightly more accurate way. First of all, as you can see, the galaxy is most likely warped. The warp in this case is a result of interaction with a lot of other galaxies previously. Second of all, our galaxy contains these unusual streams from interactions of smaller dwarf galaxies in the past. And there's also, of course, a relatively large halo that should be visible from farther away. But in certain other frequencies, you're also going to observe signs of previous eruptions, the Fermi bubbles, that are visible in the X-rays, gamma rays, and even radio light. But what about from the top? Well, the assumption here has always been that our galaxy is a spiral galaxy with possibly four arms possibly resembling something like this, the galaxy known as UGC 12158. But the majority of older studies and the analysis from older observations imply that there seem to be four galactic arms extending from the center that contains a galactic bar. These are the Perseus arm, the Norma and the Aura arm, Scutum Centaurus arm and Carina Sagittarius arm and possibly even the fifth arm known as Orion Cygnus and a lot of other small arms we've discussed in one of the previous videos somewhere in the description. Although the main point here is that a lot of scientists in the past assume that there are four main arms, maybe five, but probably four. Which though makes sense, is statistically very unlikely. Here's actually what we usually detect from various spiral galaxies, extremely similar to the Milky Way. Out of approximately 100 different galaxies, only two are known to have four arms, only one is known to have five arms. The majority of galaxies out there, especially if it's a barred galaxy, is only going to contain two arms, two main arms and possibly a few smaller ones. And that's of course statistics. And so the scientists behind the study wanted to actually find out if our observations are correct or if the newer observations might basically redefine the amount of arms. In this case, focusing on various types of state-of-the-art interferometry observations, which usually use microwave to measure accurate distances to various stars, on top of new observations from the iconic Gaia telescope that's been mapping the night skies for the past few years. And so by combining the data, they were able to establish that, yeah, we were probably wrong. It might be two arms after all. For example, here by using 200 extremely bright OB stars that generally don't really move much after their formation, they were able to map exact location for various arms, these are usually produced inside arms and not in between them. And by combining and confirming this with the Gaia telescope observation that provided them with 24,000 other stars, they essentially started to build a much more accurate picture of what's actually happening here. And by recreating the position of these stars across the galaxy, they started to work out which of the arms seem to be the main ones and which ones seem to be just additional tiny arms. Confirming that there seem to be only two, not four which was further confirmed by observing a lot of different open clusters detected by Gaia recently, thousands of which were mostly in those two arms and nowhere else. And that of course means that the galaxy very likely resembles something like this. It's a barred galaxy, it has two main arms, and everything else in it is much much shorter, more distant and very irregular. And actually very likely not even connected to the main structure. And because statistically it also makes a lot of sense, since this is what we're observing around us, there is of course very little reason to doubt this. However, if the scientists in this case might have missed something, and if our galaxy does have more arms, which would be very rare, it means that we have to try to find a way to explain these unusual attributes by using some of the additional observations in the future. But if there are only two arms, with smaller arms present somewhere inside the galaxy, 
The only thing we have to explain here is why exactly some of these arms split and when they actually formed. Currently this is believed to be a result of ancient collisions, but this is not something anyone can explain just yet. And so even though currently we kind of use this map to represent the galaxy, it's probably something we need to erase and redraw based on the study and the observations. But this of course does not answer a really important question. What exactly forms all of this and what guides this in various galaxies? Why do certain galaxies have certain shapes and certain number of arms, whereas other galaxies look very different? Well, the answer to that comes from a slightly different study. Based on the observations from the now-retired NASA's SOFIA telescope, the flying telescope that used to be part of the airplane. And in this case, what this particular telescope was able to discover basically looked like this. Over the years, it was able to create these beautiful images of various well-known galaxies displaying actual magnetic lines inside of those galaxies, sort of showing us what all of them look like if we were to try to look at them using radio light and if we tried to imagine the magnetic lines in them. And some of these images are just brilliant. But most importantly, they show us the invisible force driving a lot of star formation in various galaxies. The force that, even though we know is out there, is actually just very difficult to see. But by using years of observations of various galaxies, the scientists now believe they might have figured out how a lot of this works. And so in this recent study with the title Star Magnet, the scientists connected the galactic scale magnetic fields with the presence and the formation of different arms and stars inside of those arms. And specifically based on the orientation and the strength of the field, various types of gas tends to be funneled in certain ways, either encouraging or preventing star formation. And most importantly, in many cases, counteracting effects from gravity. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the magnetic lines inside the Milky Way, it's quite likely that the night skies here would have been much, much brighter. The magnetic lines inside our galaxy, and of course other galaxies, seem to actually stop a lot of star formation by redirecting gas into certain locations where it's sort of kept for later or used in some other way. And here's actually one of these beautiful images from a few years ago showing us some of the magnetic lines inside the Milky Way. A few years ago, one of the major confirmations here was that the magnetic lines almost directly correlate with various large gas fields, something that usually follows the Milky Way's arms. Sometimes the scientists refer to these as galactic bones. And even though we knew these bones existed for just under a decade, there was actually no explanation for what exactly they do in the galaxy. And more importantly, there was no way to map this with enough detail to try to study this. But in the last few years, the scientists collected enough data to finally start making conclusions. And specifically the connections between magnetic alignment and the dust particle alignment in various galactic structures. With this so-called bone map, revealing that the magnetic fields tend to be perpendicular to the length of the bone in various dense areas of active star formation. But they tend to be parallel in the regions where there is not a lot of star formation. Implying that when magnetic fields are parallel, they essentially seem to feed the material into some other region of the galaxy, even counteracting gravity itself. Whereas when the magnetic lines are perpendicular, the gas doesn't move much and ends up forming stars. And the major discovery here is that these fields are so powerful that they seem to actually stop star formation in almost all star-forming regions except for some of the more powerful ones. Thus driving the growth of galactic arms and potentially explaining the unusual shapes we observe in distant galaxies. Although here the obvious question that's not answered is what exactly forms these galactic lines and magnetic fields. It's probably because of the interaction of various charged particles, but the actual process is not really well understood. With the important conclusion here being that star formation seems to directly depend on magnetic fields and magnetic lines, especially when it comes to large-scale structures such as galactic arms. And it's the balance between gravity and the electromagnetic fields that results in the formation of unique shapes out there. So pretty cool stuff and something that scientists sort of speculated about, but now we have official scientific confirmation. But obviously just the first of many, and we'll actually talk more about additional discoveries in some of the future videos as well, so obviously make sure to subscribe. Anyway, on that note, for now that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.
And if you want to play a drinking game, for every comment mentioning Electric Universe in the description, take a sip of something really strong. And by the way, no, this does not prove anything about Electric Universe, which is still pseudoscience and makes no sense.